Hello, Shiva Johnson here. Welcome back. Today we are going to speak about the Sword of the Spirit, a very powerful teaching. But first, let me answer one of the questions from the last teaching about forgiveness. Well, one person asked, if we don't ask for forgiveness from God, then God won't forgive us. Does that mean we can also not forgive others if they don't ask for forgiveness? Well, that's a very good question. Well, only God reserves that right because he doesn't need forgiveness. He has never sinned, right? But according to the law of forgiveness uh, that Jesus explained in the book of Matthew, if we forgive other people's sins, then our Heavenly Father will forgive our sins. But if we don't forgive other people's sins against us, then Heavenly Father won't forgive your sins against Him. Okay? So that's the law of forgiveness, and nobody's above the law. Because we have sinned, and we need forgiveness, in order to receive forgiveness from Heavenly Father, we need to forgive others. Amen? In other words, when you go to God and say, God, please forgive me, I'm so sorry, please forgive my sin, He's going to look at the law of forgiveness and say, okay, have you forgiven other people's sins? If you say yes, he says, okay, then I will also forgive your sins. But if you say no, he will say, then I won't, I won't um, forgive your sins. Okay, point blank. That's the law of forgiveness. So uh, because we need forgiveness, we need to forgive. Uh, forgiveness from God, we need to forgive others. Now, Another reason we forgive is not just because we want to be forgiven by God, but also we want to be set free and we want the process of healing begin. Because when if you don't forgive, it's like holding on to cancer cells, okay? That's how bad it is. It degrades the body, the mind. Um, you uh, can develop psychological diseases and physical diseases, okay? Because... Unforgiveness is like, I'm sure you have heard, uh, that it's like drinking poison and expect that other person who sinned against you to die. But if you hold on to grudge, you're actually killing yourself. You're harming yourself because unforgiveness and bitterness is like a disease inside your mind and inside your spirit and your body. And it degrades you spiritually and physically and causes so many spiritual, uh, psychological, and physical diseases. There have been even ministers who have said that when they ministered to someone about forgiveness and the person was so sick with something for so many years, and when the person decided to release and to forgive, they were healed instantly. So sometimes the root cause of a disease can be unforgiveness. Um, and sometimes... The person could have held on to forgiveness for so long and this um, cancer of unforgiveness inside them have degraded them, their body so much that even if they forgive, they may not receive instant healing, but at least the process of healing can begin. Amen. So that's another reason we want to forgive, not just to receive forgiveness from God, but also because we, want, we don't want to harm ourselves, our spirit and our body. Amen. And uh, like I said, sometimes we think, oh, if I forgive that person, then he's not going to be punished for his sins. You know, that's between them and God. Okay. Like, like, you know, if they don't ask for forgiveness from God, then they're going to have to repay somehow, some way, whether you forgive or not, doesn't matter. They're going to have to repay if they haven't learned their lesson, if they don't truly repent from what they have done against you. And sometimes the person really has repented in their heart and um, you may not in, be in access, um, you know, for them to um, come to you and ask your forgiveness. But that's between them and God. God knows their heart. Okay. Hallelujah. So, but the lesson that you want to learn is the lesson of forgiveness. The lesson for that person is another lesson that's between them and God. And until they learn that lesson, they're going to have to repay. Okay. Because like I said, this the law of harvest, the law of whatever you sow, you reap, is for everybody. 
whether you forgive that person or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, if they haven't learned their lesson, they're going to have to reap what they have sowed against you. All right. So forgiveness, when you forgive, is for you, for you to be healed because you don't want the root of bitterness to eat up, eat you up from the inside. And also because you want to be forgiven by God for your sins against God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's get into the lesson about um, the uh, sword of the spirit. Okay. The sword of the spirit is a very powerful weapon against the enemy. This is Leviticus 26.7. It says, you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. See, this sword pierces through spiritual darkness, the sword of the spirit. Amen. Proverbs 12.6 says, The mouth of the upright will deliver them. By faith, you speak the word of God, okay, over your situation, and that will release God's power to deliver you. By the way, I'm reading from the section called The Sword of the Spirit from my book, Spiritual Defense, okay? So, but it's very important to understand that rehearsing the word is different from speaking the word as a sword, okay? For example, some people I've seen, they rehearse um, scriptures out loud. For example, they say, no weapon born against me shall prosper. And, but inside they're full of fear. They don't really believe what they're saying. That's not the sword of the spirit. The sword of spirit is when the word of God has traveled from your mind into your heart. And you believe it with every fiber of your being. Okay. Then when you speak that out loud, that's the sword of the spirit. If you're just rehearsing the word without believing it, without it having entered your heart, it's not a sword. It's a butter knife. Okay. It cuts, you know, through some things, but it doesn't cut through um, thick darkness like the sword does. Amen. So instead of starting rehearsing the word without believing it first, first, Meditate on the word, okay? Keep meditating until you really believe it. Say, okay, I'm, I'm really going to trust God. I'm really going to believe this word. I'm really going to believe this scripture. And when you do, when you feel that you really believe it, then you speak it. Wow, that's going to be like waves of like a sonic wave sent to the enemy's camp, okay? Very powerful. That's the sword of the spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to share with you two examples that is also in this book of using the sword of the spirit. For example, I heard the testimony of John Hagee. Okay. He, when he was just preaching from the pulpit, somebody, uh, a demoniac who was demon possessed with a gun came um, to a close distance from the pulpit and started shooting uh, and pointed a gun at him, okay? And uh, he picked up his Bible and said, this Bible tells me, I'm talking about John Hagee, he said, this Bible tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And those of you who know uh, John Hagee, you know he's a very powerful uh, person. He, had, he really believed what he was saying. He said he believed that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. He didn't just speak it without believing it. And because of that, when the demoniac shot a couple of um, uh, bullets from a close range, it did not hit him. It was as if there was a shield around him, okay, the shield of faith. And by the way, the shield of faith is very powerful too. And that's also explained in this book, Spiritual Defense, how you can use it against the bullets of the enemy shot at you, both spiritual bullets or physical. Okay, so that's that's an example of using the sword of the spirit, how John Hagee used the sword of the spirit to protect himself for supernatural protection against the enemy. 
Hallelujah. Another example is that um, a member of our church, which is who is a um, you know um, young lady, uh, he she's not a pastor or anyone you know anyone um, any, or a minister, but just a regular church member. But she uh, really believed this uh, verse that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue. Uh, which rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn or shall be condemned. So there, she was uh, on her bicycle, you know, uh, riding her bicycle down the street. And all of a sudden, these uh, boys who were, um, you know, these, um, these uh, not adults, but, you know, just boys who were playing on the street, they started harassing her and uh, calling her names and things like that. And she, with so much faith, she said, every tongue which rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. And guess what? She says, all of a sudden, these boys, like roaches, they ran, in, they ran away in different directions from her. They just ran away. They were playing all together, and there were a group of them. They just ran away. See, there is no uh, natural explanation for what happened. This was the sort of spirit that came out of her mouth because she really believed it and she believed what she spoke. And the demons in those little kids who were um, harassing this Christian girl, they saw that sword and they ran away. Okay, so that was another example of how powerful the sword of the spirit can be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this weapon that he has given us. For example, some people I've seen, they rehearse um, scriptures out loud. For example, they say, no weapon from against me shall prosper. And But inside, they're full of fear. They don't really believe what they're saying. That's not the sword of the spirit. The sword of spirit is when the word of God has traveled from your mind into your heart. And you believe it with every fiber of your being. Okay? Then when you speak that out loud, that's the sword of the spirit. If you're just rehearsing the word without believing it, without it having entered your heart, it's not a sword. It's a butter knife. Okay? It cuts, you know, through some things, but it doesn't cut through um, thick darkness like the sword does. Amen? So... Instead of starting rehearsing the word without believing it first, first, meditate on the word, okay? Keep meditating until you really believe it. Say, okay, I'm, I'm really going to trust God. I'm really going to believe this word. I'm really going to believe this scripture. And when you do, when you feel that you really believe it, then you speak it. Wow. That's going to be like waves of like a sonic wave sent to the enemy's camp okay very powerful that's the sword of the spirit amen now i'm going to share with you two examples that is also in this book of using the sword of the spirit for example i heard the testimony of john hagee okay he when he was just preaching from the pulpit somebody uh, a demoniac who was demon possessed with a gun came um to a close distance from the pulpit and started shooting uh, and pointed a gun at him, okay? And uh, he picked up his Bible and said, this Bible tells me, I'm talking about John Hagee, he said, this Bible tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And those of you who know uh, John Hagee, you know he's a very powerful uh, person. He, had, he really believed what he was saying. He said he believed that, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. He didn't just speak it without believing it. And because of that, when the demoniac shot a couple of um, uh, bullets from a close range, it did not hit him. It was as if there was a shield around him, okay, the shield of faith. And by the way, the shield of faith is very powerful too. And that's also explained in this book, Spiritual Defense, how you can use it against the bullets 
of the enemy shot at you, both spiritual bullets or physical, okay? So that's, that's an example of using the sword of the spirit, how John Hagee used the sword of the spirit to protect himself for supernatural protection against the enemy. Hallelujah. Another example is that um, a member of our church, which is who is a you know um, young lady, uh, he she's not a pastor or anyone you know anyone um, any, or a minister, but just a regular church member. But she uh, really believed this uh, verse that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue. Uh, which rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn or shall be condemned. So there, she was uh, on her bicycle, you know, uh, riding her bicycle down the street. And all of a sudden, these uh, boys who were, um, you know, these, um, these uh, not adults, but, you know, just boys who were playing on the street, they started harassing her and uh, calling her names and things like that. And she, with so much faith, she said, every tongue which rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. And guess what? She says, all of a sudden, these boys, like roaches, they ran, in, they ran away in different directions from her. They just ran away. They were playing all together, and there were a group of them. They just ran away. See, there is no uh, natural explanation for what happened. This was the sort of spirit that came out of her mouth because she really believed it and she believed what she spoke. And the demons in those little kids who were um, harassing this Christian girl, they saw that sword and they ran away. Okay, so that was another example of how powerful the sword of the spirit can be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this weapon that he has given us. If only we knew how powerful our spiritual weapons are, we would never resort to physical weapons. Okay? See, God is not interested in the sword in our hand. Um, again, I'm reading from this book, Spiritual Defense. God is not interested in the sword in our hand, which represents fighting in the natural. Jesus said, all who take the sword will perish by the sword. That's Matthew 26, 52. God is interested in the sword in our mouth, which is a spiritual weapon. We read in the book of Revelation that when Jesus returns on a white horse, he will destroy the enemies, his enemies, by the sword that comes out of his mouth. That's Revelation 19:21. Hallelujah. So powerful. The spiritual weapons in our hands. And that's exactly why I wrote this book, Spiritual Defense, because it teaches you how to use your spiritual weapons. Because to go to war against a spiritual enemy with physical um, uh, with physical um, weapons is like suicide. Okay? It's like shooting at a ghost with a gun it's not gonna hurt him right so it's very important to learn how to use our um, spiritual weapons and when i say the enemy i just don't just mean the demonic spirits i also need when i also mean when the demonic spirits are using a person for example this uh, friend of ours her husband was not uh, is not saved and he was cussing at her and really um, attacking her verbally and all of a sudden she decided instead of answering back like she normally did just praying tongues and she did it out loud she was praying out loud in tongues and the husband looked at her and walked away which was very unusual for her for him to do such a thing okay that stopped the war he she decided me instead of using my tongue uh, for um, you know speaking back and talk back as a natural weapon i'm going to use my tongue as a spiritual weapon hallelujah how smart this what a smart decision you see i really must have been under the <clears throat> powerful influence of the holy spirit when i wrote this book 
because the testimonies that I've been receiving uh, from the readers over the years are just over the top. Now I decided to finally record one of them. So listen to this one, this testimony of this a lady who um, read this book, Spiritual Defense. So Shiva, I want to thank you for the gift of your book. Spiritual Defense. Spiritual Defense. I thought I understood the armor of God until I began reading your book, Mesmerized. And you have, you have a supreme gift of taking something that can be complex and making it very simple. And you brought me to a deeper understanding and revelation of what that armor of God truly means. And you showed a light into the darkness of my own immaturity as a Christian and showed me where I need to grow and where I need to self-correct and where my faith and trust needs to deepen and my relationship if God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit needs to grow to a new platform. And without this book, I wouldn't have known, and I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. Oh, praise God. Thank you. What's your name again? Hallelujah. And another time, this uh, man came to me and said that he was having suicidal thoughts. And he luckily, he had bought this book, and it was in his car in his car, in the back of his car, and uh, he says, something told me, reach out for the book. So he reached out for the book and just opened it, just opened it, and started reading. After just a few minutes, he says that suicidal thoughts left him completely. That's the power of God. Hallelujah. Like I said, I must have been really under the influence of the Holy Spirit when I wrote this, uh, read this wrote this book because sometimes I even pick it up and read it and I even get blessed and I get stronger. My armor just gets stronger. Hallelujah. Because it's uh, really from God. I was just a pen in God's hands, in the hands of God to write it down. Hallelujah. So if you want to get your copy, if you haven't already, you go to megapraiseministries.com. Okay. And you look for the book, Spiritual Defense. There's also the ebook. So um, those of you who like to listen, you can put it on the audio mode uh, and just listen to it. If you don't have time to sit down and read, you can just listen to it while you're doing um, your chores. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, and that was the end of today's lesson. Now, for those of you who are interested, I wanted to share with you regarding this miracle working machine, which looks like a blow dryer. Um, I, th I just thought it was too good for me to keep it to myself because most of the prayer requests we, that our ministry receives is for healing. And I've been trying this on my mom, and they ha I, it's, it just has had magical um, results, uh, almost miraculous results. Um, for example, she came down with um, knee um, pain, severe knee pain. She was like, oh, my God. I feel like my knee is exploding. That's how bad it was. And I had to give her like four Advils a day, at least four or five, if not more. Um, it was, so she just needed pain reliever. And I took her to the chiropractor, uh, took x-rays, and it was, uh, she, he said she has severe arthritis and she just has to live with it, it's severe arthritis. And um, so, um, I said, I can't watch my mom to just live in pain, especially when it's severe pain, and um, um, just let her take five Advils a day, four or five Advils a day. That's, that's really bad for the liver. There has to be a solution, you know, praying and everything. Then I, uh, because I had, uh, when I was in um, Julie Green, uh, when me and my husband were in Julie Green, um, um, Julie Green's uh, conference, at my book, when I was at my book table, a, a surgeon um, approached my table and we started talking and one thing led to another and he told me about this uh, machine, this wand, okay, it looks, it's a wand, it's like a wand and it, it looks like a blow dryer, it even sounds like a blow dryer, see, but it actually gives off this blue color light 
which is um, uh, actually, um, according to the science that, um, that I um, uh, studied, it promotes your stem cells. You know, it promotes your stem cells because as we age, our stem cells don't really uh, get produced as much anymore. And they come out of the uh, spine, I think, out of the bones, right? And um, But when you blow this on your body, it stimulates them again as if you were young. And your body starts producing its own stem cells again from the bone marrow. And they, these stem cells go uh, all over your body and repair your body, okay? And, so, and stem cell therapy is actually thousands, um, cost thousands of dollars. But this one is only, let me see how much I paid for this. I paid $700 for this, but there's another model, which is $400, um, which does this, the exact same thing. The only difference is that this one has different degrees. See, there's see, lower, higher. But the $400 one only has a high um, setting. So anyway, I blew, blew this on my mother's knee for, and when I blew, every time that I, I would put like castor oil on her knee, okay, and then blow this. And she would say, after 15 minutes, she would say, oh, after 15 minutes of blowing, she would say, oh, my pain is gone. So instead of taking Advil, 15 minutes of this. Instead of taking Advil, which has all these side effects, right? But then I kept on doing, doing it for a couple of weeks, for two, uh, about three weeks, okay? And after three weeks of doing it twice a day, uh, first I started 15 minutes at a time, then I uh, increased it to 20 minutes and 30 minutes, but it was twice a day, okay? It was castor oil on her knee and then blow this one. And her knee pain, she, he, she actually started walking again because she likes walking. That's the exercise that she really likes to do every day. She, and she was so upset and so, so sad that she couldn't walk anymore. She couldn't go walking. She could walk, you know, in, in, around the house, but she couldn't go walking. And uh, she, she, now she, she started going walking again. Hallelujah. Of course, I told her, you know, take it easy. Don't go a couple of miles like you used to, you know, go... Um, take it easy, but at least she can go walking again. Hallelujah. And her pain is gone. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if the pain will come back and I have to reuse this. I don't know. But just the fact, even if it comes back, uh, I will keep you posted on that. Even if it comes back and I have to reuse it, still better than using Advil, okay, which is very bad for the liver. Now, another testimony or uh, my uncle's wife came to our house and uh, my uncle said you know my wife won't come out of the car because she's in pain she wants to go home so I went to the car and said please come inside I want to try this wand on you and she was in tears that's how much she was in pain she was actually in tears and I said um, uh, okay let's just let's just use it and if you don't feel better then you can go home so, and she had pain in her abdominal area or maybe pancreas. It was on her right side. And uh, so I put, again, I put my um, <laughs> castor oil on her. Um, you know, the, the people who produce this, they don't say use castor oil. That's just my own remedy. I like to use castor oil for everything, okay? So I put castor oil on her, um, um, the right side of her tummy. And I started blowing this for 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, okay, because it was her first time. I didn't want to overdo it. And guess what? She, who wanted to go home, she got up. She was, she was not in tears anymore. She could, you know, have some interaction with us. And after about an hour or two, then she went home. She said, I'm really tired. I need to go rest. So I asked her after just using 15 or 20 minutes of this, I said, Okay, how much the degree of pain changed? She said it went from 90 to 20. I'm like, wow. Just like my mom, the very first time I used it on her, she said my pain went from 10 to 2. 
okay my um this one because she was in tears she was like my it was 90 she was it went from 90 to 20. i'm like oh okay wonderful that's that's really good result after just one application so just wanted to i thought this was too good to give keep it for myself because i know there are some people who suffer from so many conditions and there are so many pills and if you go on um, YouTube, you can listen to more testimonials about what iTeraCare has been doing for them. This is called iTeraCare. It's Prife, P-R-I-F-E, iTeraCare, okay? And uh, you can listen to more testimonials. And I put it in the um, link, in the description uh, link of this video, how you can get it if you decide, if, if the Lord leads you to get it. Amen. So just wanted to share that with you. So when I use it on my mom and my um, uncle's wife, I use the high setting. Um, it's which the four hundred model, four hundred dollar model, and only has the high high temperature setting. But some people maybe you know sensitive and they want a lower temperature and like oh this is too hot. And then with this one, which is seven hundred dollars, you have that option to change the setting to a lower temperature. Um, but of course, the higher temperature works better. And even though I have the option of lower temperature, um, but on my mom and my uncle's wife, I only use the high temperature. But I personally, for myself, have a low tolerance for heat. And so I sometimes use the lower temperature. Um, so the lower setting. But I don't know, they say um, it's okay, it still works, even the lower setting, uh, because you're not supposed to feel like you're burning, you know. But, um, but at the same time, the higher temperature, because um, the way actually this works is that it, the, the Blu-ray that it gives off, I don't know if you can see the Blu-ray here, I don't know. Okay, maybe you could. Um, the Blu-ray that it gives off, it has the same frequency as the frequency of the cells of the body. So it resonates. So the cells of the body resonate with this wave of energy and they start vibrating. They, they start coming alive to come alive. The cells that are sick or dormant or they're not really alive, they come alive because they start moving around. They start moving and they start healing themselves. And that's why a lot of when you read the test, uh, watch the testimonies on YouTube, there is a lot of, for example, this lady had a surgery, so there wasn't enough skin. So her skin had become so tight that she couldn't open her mouth, uh, her hand all the way. Okay, it was like this. Her hand was like this because of the skin that was not enough skin because they had, got, they had sewn it and they did surgery on her. And then after using this one, after a few weeks or um, I don't know, maybe a couple of months, I'm not sure how long, her, her, her hands started opening up because new skin started adding because that's what stem cells do. They add uh, new cells to the body where it's needed, okay, where the body needs repair and needs more like almost like creative miracle, um, kind of like that because it creates new cells so i don't know if it also maybe regenerates um, new brain cells for dementia i'm not sure i haven't heard any testimony on that but all i know is that when i looked into the scientific research it causes regeneration regenerates the cells that have been dead oh this surgeon who told me about this at the conference he said his mother had a, like 18 years ago had uh, cancer and had to use chemotherapy and radiation therapy so her saliva glands were not secreting saliva anymore so and you know how bad that could be you know when you, you don't have saliva anymore for 18 years she had that condition she says i started blowing on her after the first application, only after about 15 minutes or so, her mouth started becoming wet again. After 18 years, that's regeneration, okay? And there are other, and this is this was uh, the mother of the surgeon who introduced this to me, 
Okay. Now on YouTube, there were people who claimed that after, you know, instead of blowing with the regular blow dryer, they started using this. And after a couple of months or a few months, I don't know how long, their black hair started coming out or their original color hair started coming out. As again, that's regeneration. Hallelujah. So this is like a miracle working machine and I just didn't want to keep it to myself. This is an amazing piece of machine. And for the price, for what it does, the price I believe is amazing because like I said, stem cell therapy costs thousands of dollars. Amen, hallelujah. So just wanted to share that with you. Um, and oh, and one more thing, there's also, uh, because some people are like, oh, I don't want to hold this, you know, some people just hold it, you know, no problem, they just hold it. But some people are like, oh, I don't want to hold it for 15 minutes. So the, they, uh, the company came up with a stand. The stand is, uh, it actually moves it around because you're not supposed to just hold it, you're supposed to you go like that, like a you know, count, like a clockwise direction. You have to go like that, or just move it. You're not supposed to just hold it like that. Okay, so the uh, people complained about, you know, you know, my hand gets tired for long, t long term holding it. So the company came up with a stand. There's also a stand, but the stand because it is very, it's not a regular stand. It moves. It's adjustable um, with height and. All that, so it's an expensive stance, two hundred fifty dollars. But I just wanted to share that with you, is that there is that option too. Okay, so um, uh, like I said, this is an amazing piece of machine that I wanted to share with you. Um, like I said, listen to testimonials on YouTube and the kind of conditions that different people have had. It's just amazing. Hallelujah. And I just shared with you just two of the examples that I personally have used it because I've had it for only um, like three weeks, four weeks maybe. Uh, so I only could give you two testimonies, but if you want more testimonials, then you can find them on YouTube. Just search for Prive Itero Care, hallelujah. And if you, the Lord leads you to get it, uh, you can and try it for yourself. You can, um, the, the, in the description of this video, I put the link for you, hallelujah. Now, thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, shalom and God bless you.